In this video, we're going to calculate the KPI slope for slow moving and obsolete inventory. This is one of the two most important KPI for your supply chain. And I'm going to show you a step by step tutorial in Excel that you can download below the video. And the idea is really to track these KPIs and make sure that you have a supply chain profitable and a sustainable business with as little obsolete and slow moving stock as possible. All right, so if you want to have a profitable supply chain and business, you need to focus on three main pillars, service, cost, and inventory. And in this specific video, we're going to focus on the slope. I really recommend you to check my inventory turnover ratio before to focus on the global stock level. But in this one, we're going to focus specifically in the slow moving and obsolete inventory. And that's two different KPIs, but just to keep it very simple, <laughs> the percentage of slope is the quality of your inventory and the lower is the better. And the idea is really to focus first on tracking this KPI, then you can analyze, focus, optimize, and if necessary, implement innovations to improve the performance of your supply chain. All right, so before going to Excel, it's very important to understand the difference between obsolete and slow moving. Uh, the obsolete, we can also call it discontinued inventory or dead inventory. Uh, this is this kind of products like this banana. You don't want to have this banana or this milk or eggs with an expiry date in the, in the past. Same for like medical products. I was working in the, in the cosmetic industries and we had, we had a lot of problem with like, uh, like expired product that we could not ship to the distributors and we had to destroy this product or donate if it was possible. At the end, you have a huge impact on the business if you cannot sell this product because you have to pay for it, you have to pay the logistics, the inventory costs, and at the end, you cannot sell them and you're gonna lose up to 100% of the value or even more if you have to pay for the destruction, okay? You can also, like in the fashion industry, for example, uh, this is the summer collection and we are moving to the winter collection. It will be much more difficult uh, to sell this uh, beautiful uh, flower dress. So, and we call it like obsolete inventory because this is the, the past uh, season or collection and we have to do like a promotion, 30%, 50%. Another time, this is a big cost for, the, for your company and we have to minimize this value as much as possible. Same for the industry, you could have, for example, maintenance product so let's say you, you, you have like engine uh, for the car industry and you had a diesel version and now everyone is moving to the, the electric version and yeah no one wants to buy the uh, diesel version so you'll have to do maybe 80% or 90% promotions with another time and uh, an impact like for your business and the profitability of your company. Then we have slow moving inventory. So we can also call it excess inventory, edge inventory or leftover inventory. These kind of products, you, you need these products today. They're not like the, the previous collection. If I take, for example, these Nike shoes, you do need uh, Nike shoes. This is the current collection and my optimal store will be four quantities to secure 98% of service. But your actual stock is not four, it's like 24. So you have a lot of excess. And unfortunately, you don't need that much stock and this excess, maybe at one point you'll have to pay extra cost maybe for logistics. You would probably do maybe future discount because you have maybe a six months, one year, two years inventory and you want to switch to the new collection. So that's an extra cost for your business that you don't need to guarantee uh, like a good level of service. So you will ask me, okay, Edouard, but how do you calculate this? I really recommend you uh, after this video to really double check my inventory turnover ratio because one of the best way, and we're gonna do that in Excel just after, is to calculate the stock turn of your products to really identify, okay, my first product has only 61 days and the other one has 183 days. I have a full step-by-step uh, -step tutorial in this video. It's not about the value, it's about how many days of inventory do you have like to cover uh, the demand of your customers. Okay, so if you want to also know more about how to order the optimal stock, I was talking about, okay, but how do I define four quantities? I recommend you to also check my videos, EOQ and Wilson formula, and also what is the best safety stock uh, calculation for your business. Okay, so now let's go into Excel. You can download uh, below the video, you have a link, and then you can practice with me to implement this KPI immediately for your company. All right, so back to Excel, as always, uh, you can download this Excel, and we do have 10 products uh, in this uh, phase. So first of all, I'm going to explain to you how to focus on obsolete and then the slow moving uh, products. So you need to define to know what is obsolete. You need to have a status like you can see active on obsolete. You can do it manually, or you could also use what we call a, a date to re really like do it automatically. In most of the company, I'm gonna show you this right now, we do have a starting date and an ending date for every product. It could be like a collection, it could be like 
uh, coming from your product management team, uh, from uh, your sales team, who is like maybe responsible to uh, define what will be the, the best moment to sell your products. You could be also an expiry date uh, for every single product. The only difference would be you will have to duplicate these rows to have like one row per batch of products. You could have like one production from yesterday, another one from today, etc., etc. But at the end, uh, my formula is quite simple. Uh, you can download and check the formula. It will be much uh, easier for you, but you need to define what is your date of today. So you could also use the formula today like this, today. There we go. And then you can just define if, if my date of today is before my starting date, then the product is new. If my date of today is after the ending date, then my product is obsolete. And if it's in between, my product is active. Okay, so you have this automatic formula. And at the end, you just copy and paste this formula like this. Tac. And we do have uh, the study for every single product. I do also have a conditional formatting that you can do like this. I like to have I like this kind of alert to make sure that I can see quickly what is the toxic stock for my business. <laughs> and that's the way to have my obsolete stock. Then we do have the stock value. You can use the, what we call the COGS uh, value. You can check my inventory turnover video if you want to know more about uh, this uh, stock valuation. And to calculate the obsolete uh, value, it's quite simple. You just have to do the sum of all this obsolete stock. We have $4,450 uh, uh, divided by the total. You can do it manually. You, you can use a semi formula or you can use a pivot table. We can do a pivot table like this. It's quite simple. And let's do like this. Insert pivot table. Da, da, da. Existing worksheet. There we go. And we go for status. We go for stock. And what you can do, you can do it manually or like this. I like this way. You click here, value settings. And you go for percentage of grand total. There we go. We do have the percentage 10.7% of obsolete inventory. And this is uh, the this kind of KPI you want to track every single uh, week and months to make sure that it's going as low as possible because this kind of uh, product can be all completely destroyed because it has no value. For example, if you work for the food or pharmaceutical industry or that this kind of product that you need to do a promotion to make sure like if you can still sell it to make sure you're not losing too much money in the next uh, few months. All right, so that was for the obsolete uh, KPI, that's a very simple one, but very important. And I can see many companies not tracking properly and regularly this KPI. And the second one is what we call the slow moving. For the slow moving, we need to calculate what we call the inventory turnover or the stock turn. Uh, I have a complete tutorial for that. I, I gave you the link before. And in this one, we're going to calculate, okay, what is my inventory turnover for every single product? We just have to divide. If you check my formula, the stock divided by the sales with the same valuation. So we use the Cox valuation multiplied by the period. In this specific case, I'm using the last 90 days. I recommend uh, if you don't have much volatility and seasonality to use maybe the last two months or three months and not the last 12 months, unless you have very, very low volumes. And in this case, we do have the stock turn in days. You can also use the forecast. If you have the forecast, you can use the coverage, uh, but I'm going to share that in another <laughs> tutorial. <laughs> All right. So now we have the stock turn. It's much easier. You can also add another conditional formatting. It's much easier to identify which one of like too much inventory, not necessary obsolete inventory. This one is obsolete, but not this one. And now you have to define a rule to say, okay, which one I need to focus first. And the one you have to focus first are the biggest value, obviously, and also the biggest value in terms of inventory level. So I would definitely focus on this one and try to improve this one. And if you want to categorize your products, the question is, okay, do I, but do I need to focus above 50, 60, 70, 100? Just keep it very simple. <laughs> if you average, like this is the total average, please check my format to make sure this is correct. Uh, but if you have like an average for the global level at 35, I would say like starting from maybe you can do twice the average at the beginning. So let's go to 70. It won't change anything for this specific case. Uh, my products are defined as excess because I have way too much uh, versus the average. So keep it very simple. You can obviously play with this number. I could say 40, but it will be probably too much. So I really want to focus on my biggest value uh, first. And then I just have a formula. If my stock turn is above, my parameters and you can change, then it's defined as excess. So in this specific example, we do have three products uh, 
uh, with too much inventory, like slow moving inventory. And we have to focus on these three uh, to make sure that we can improve that. So that's a very simple way Then you can do a percentage, like which one, like you could do the sum or the percentage of the total inventory, like I did for the obsolete. Uh, I like to keep it very simple. So in, for my personal case, I will focus only on the obsolete inventory. And then I will focus on the on the global level of inventory turnover, but every uh, every week I will ask to my demand planning team to really focus on the top value of inventory and uh, with uh, like more than X of uh, X days of inventory turnover. I'm going a bit fast, but this is just to give you a few insights and I'm going to tell you after how to go deeper in this subject. This is like a very simple solution. What you can do as well, you can also use because one of the limitations could be like, okay, but this product has, for example, maybe uh, six months of uh, lead time with the supplier and this one only one day. So if you want to go deeper, you could also uh, compare versus the safety and reorder point recommended level. It's a more complex uh, methodology, but if you want to go deeper, you can check my other tutorials and uh, workshop if you want to go uh, deeper on this subject. But this is a very good way to start. Start with the obsolete value, 10.7%. Track this value every single week and really push all the department to do everything possible before it's too late. Then focus on your top, like uh, highest stock turn and inventory turnover value. Just keep it simple with your with your parameters to really focus on the biggest value first. And then if you want to go deeper, you can also check safety stock and real point recommended level. And when you feel ready, you can implement this KPI, not only with 10 products, but with 10 or 20,000 products like this asymmetric dashboard uh, to see like clearly what is your obsolete stock uh, for the global level, per country or region. I always recommend also to have like an obsolete level uh, per category of products to make sure you focus really on uh, the most important first, like for example, in this specific case, brand one. All right, so how to reduce your slope and improve your service. This is the, one of the biggest challenges of my life. And of course, if you don't improve that, you can go to bankruptcy. Many business go to bankruptcy because they buy too much and then they have too much obsolete and slow moving stock. And at one point, they don't have enough cash flow to secure their business. If you really want to go deeper, whatever you're working from raw material manufacturing to retail, I really recommend you first to check my YouTube videos, like for example, this one, how to optimize your inventory. And then if you want to go to the next level, I have a free workshop uh, to track, first of all, the performance of the whole supply chain. If you want to do like this cool, uh, dashboard with me and I also have another one uh, to reduce uh, the shortage and the overstock of your company with uh, certain parameters so I have two free workshops so you have all the link below the videos if you want to go deeper uh, with me and become an expert I hope you enjoyed this video let me know in the comments if you have any questions uh, regarding these KPIs and I will be super happy to help you give me a like subscribe and I see you very soon for another tutorial mm -hmm.